Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are going to be taking a look at a couple of new things. We are looking at the Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. This is a midi sized palette inspired by the Retro Mini as well as the Glam midi sized palette. So we're gonna take a look at that. We've got a few eye looks and you know some comparisons we're gonna look at. And then we're also gonna be taking a look at one of the Hakuhoto limited edition sets. So this was actually part of, well, this was one of the holiday collections they released last year, but they ended up deciding to bring it back and it is considered like a permanent limited edition set. So what that means is it might not always be available, but it will be reoccurring. And I just checked right now, the Hakuhoto US set, USA site. They are out of stock of this, but it does say coming soon, so it will be back. But it is currently available at Food Age Japan, which is where I purchased mine. So we're going to take a look at the brushes, how they apply, and some comparisons for those as well. Because if you are familiar with Hakuhoto sets, they typically use brush shapes that are in the permanent collection, just give you kind of like a different handle and so forth. So we're going to take a look at that. Let's start off with the Retro Glam palette. Let's start off with some swatches. So we'll go over details on this palette while we are looking at some looks, but I just want to show you the cover here. You can see it definitely has more of that retro appearance. You have this pale pinky peach blush kind of color as a background. You can see it's an ombre into a pale sage green. And then here you've got kind of like the sage green and like a bronzy gold, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, that glassware that we have seen from like, I don't know if it was 60s, 70s, but it's kind of like that amber colored uh, glass. And that's kind of what it looks like on here. So this is raised, you can see it's kind of got like a lucite layer on top of the palette. And as all Natasha Denona um, midi size palettes, you do have the uh, circles in the back, which are the holes essentially where you can poke out and change around your shades but she does keep the color names printed on the actual palette so let's take a look at this we're going to go row by row and let's go ahead and take a look at how these actually appear on the skin most of the shades are pretty true to color in the pan you can see we start off with this shimmery cranberry followed by this shimmery kind of like a bark brown kind of shade like a deep bark brown and then following that we have this really beautiful it's not quite a taupe there's not enough gray in there to make it a taupe but it's kind of this soft golden brown with a little bit of a cool note to it and then we have this green here this is going to be more of a creamy matte and you can see this one is called evergreen and it's pretty reminiscent of the name the last shade in the top row is going to be a shimmery minty green and you can see that you know this green i'll have a comparison with the pastel palette but those the pastel greens they may be similar in you know depth of color and so forth but they are actually going to be a bit more aqua, more teal-like than these, which are a bit more minty. So the second row, we have the shade Maxi, which you can see is a shimmery, softer version of the Jazzy shade, which is the second one here. And then we have this Sage Green, which is kind of a deep sage green. Following that, these are all going to be more uh, powdery mattes here, so they don't swatch quite as well. But we have this pale pinky peach shade called holly followed by a soft mint green called french and then the last shade in the second row is going to be a soft brown with a touch of taupe in there the third row we're starting off with this beautiful shimmer shade called flutter and you can see that this shade here is not going to be as opaque as any of the other shades it can be used as a topper Following that, we have another powdery matte called Lucy, which is gonna be a very soft light, kind of like a khaki brown. And then we have the shade Palladian, which is a really soft sheer mint with a touch of ice blue. And then we have a mid-tone tea rose. And then our last shade is a shimmery green called Oz. And that's kind of similar to this 
evergreen shade up here, but it's going to be a more shimmery version. So this is the Retro Glam palette. And again, we'll do some comparisons, but first let's talk a little bit more about this palette. Now the Natasha Denona Retro Glam palette is a midi sized palette, which means that we have 15 shades and we have a total net weight of 19.25 grams. There's a two year shelf life on this and the palette, you know, all the shadows are made in Italy. It's not tested on animals. It's paraben free, alcohol free, preservative free, mineral oil free, UV filters free, and a whole bunch of other things like D5 and so forth. Now, according to Natasha Denona, okay, if you are familiar with her palettes, there are always a variety of finishes and we can see that with the swatches. With her matte eyeshadows, she recommends using a fluffy eyeshadow brush for blending or a detail brush for precision. She has the metallic sparkling duochrome shades, the crystal eyeshadows, all of those you wanna use something a bit more dense for a subtle finish. Or if you want a uh, like high payoff foiled finish, you wanna use either a damp brush or your finger, or you can also use a foam tip applicator. So in this particular palette, we have a range of different finishes and I will leave a photo up on the screen during these demos where you can kind of see the color numbers and names on here as well. So with the different finishes. So, you know, I have to say, I do like Natasha Denona's formulas. I think they perform really well. She does have her, um, what she calls the creamy mattes actually to me feel a bit more like a more powdery matte. You can see they're a little bit dustier in the pan. Those are the ones in the second row primarily that, you know, I mentioned don't swatch as well. That's because they are a little bit powdery. Those are fantastic though for laying down a base or blending out. They really perform well. Now in this particular palette, this was created to kind of combine the Natasha Denona Mini Retro, which is you know, probably one of my favorite palettes. You know, it's probably my favorite, at least in my top three Natasha Denona palettes of all. And I absolutely love it. I think it was done so well. You've got these beautiful like soft pinks and greens and some, you know, a, a few like neutral shades in there, but just that particular collaboration with colors just works so well. And so this palette was kind of inspired by that. She did come out with the retro palette last year in a midi size, but it was kind of very, very different. And from what I understand, she is planning kind of like a little series on these retro inspired palettes. So I believe there may actually be another midi size palette that comes out in the future, like in a year or two. But this one here was inspired by the mini retro as well as the glam palette. It really does not look very much like the retro midi that came out last year, but we'll take a look at that as well. Now, a few more things to note about this eyeshadow palette. This palette is not going to be for everybody. This is more of a niche color story and it is very beautiful. I have heard and seen like some complaints on Instagram and so forth that the colors are a little bit too similar and I can see where people are coming from with that. But really, if you are looking at this, you're getting kind of those minty greens, you're getting cranberries and roses, you're getting some neutrals. So you're getting kind of that same color story that you have with the mini retro, but you're getting different tones and finishes of it. So you can create more variety, but it's still very much much based off of that original color story. And I really appreciate that. So I think particularly for people who are looking for softer eyeshadow looks, the majority of the mattes in here are very light in pigmentation. They're great for blending. They're going to give you a soft wash of color. And you know, that's a great way to kind of get a soft eye look that's still semi neutral, but not as neutral as the typical browns and grays that we've been seeing. So, you know, I think this is a nice deviation from that, but you can still get a very soft eye look. And as you can see with the ones that I did, I did not go wild. <laughs> um, so you can most certainly do that with these, but I feel like it's much easier to see looks where they are more pigmented and you're seeing more foiled color um, on Instagram and so forth. So I really wanted to focus on more everyday wearable looks. And uh, you know, I think this palette is really great for that. I also think it's a really good companion palette to others that you might have just like a regular neutral and so forth. So uh, overall, I think it's a very nice palette. 
I have to say though, it is not going to be my favorite Natasha Denona palette because I do wish that there were just maybe a few other colors in here. You know, some of the colors we do have like the same tone, the same shade, just with different finishes, which is great, but it would have been nice just to see one or two different shades in here that, you know, could perhaps take the palette in a slightly different direction. So for example, all of our neutrals from this, uh, you know, inspired by the glam palette, they are mostly browns and some of them, you know, lean a little bit cool, but for the most part, you know, you're looking at kind of the same tone with different finishes or different depths of color. And it would have been nice to see something perhaps a little bit cooler, something more taupe or something more gray, you know, just to give it something from a different spectrum there. And, you know, I feel the same way about like the greens. Again, we've kind of got all of the same undertones in those greens, and it would have been nice to see something from other ends of the spectrum as well. So overall though, I have to say, I really do love this palette. I think it's a great wearable palette, but it's also something that you can glam up. So let me know what you think about this, but I think it's a great palette. Now let's go ahead and move on, take a look at some comparisons. So here is the Retro Glam palette. And I did take some comparison photos separately that we're gonna look at some videos, but this is the retro midi size palette that came out last year. And you can see that this is really going to be based more on those cranberry tones. So I did not compare these side by side, but I do wanna do just a few swatches here to show you, you know, how similar a few of these shades are. So in particular, this first shade here is called Flare. You can see it's kind of this shimmery cranberry, and it's really reminiscent of these two cranberry matte shades here in retro. So just wanna go ahead and swatch those. It's actually gonna be pretty close, I think, to the second one, which is called Rebellion. So let's go, we're gonna put these on the top. This is Groove, and this is Rebellion. And you can see that the Flare shade is gonna have a bit more orange in it, but it's kind of like what Rebellion looks like when you brush it out, when you soften that up, you have kind of the same tone. This is gonna be a little bit more pink, but you have kind of the same tone just with a bunch of shimmer. So that was one that I wanted to compare. And then I also wanted to take a look at this shade here, Jude, because this is you know, gonna be kind of a brown shimmery shade. And this is actually, you know, it doesn't really match up with any of these but you can see it does still kind of continue that color story with similar shades in there. It doesn't match anything, but it goes very well with this one and these softer mattes here as well. So, you know, you can tell that they are, they, there's still a theme between the retro palettes. Now, just a few other standalone comparisons. I wanted to take a look. This is the Dior Backstage palette in 008 Khaki Neutrals. And I just wanted to show you, you know, this green shade here, which is kind of a matte. We're gonna put this down here with the shade Oz from the Natasha Denona. And you can see this shade, it has a little bit of shimmer. It's not gonna be as shimmery as this, but it is, let's go ahead and swatch this right here next to the shade Evergreen as well. You can see that they do have some similarities. The palette itself is not going to be, um, you know, truly the same color story, but we do have some similar shades here with these, uh, you know, kind of these softer matte shades here. So you can kind of see that we do have, you know, something fairly similar to those. So it's just another option if you're looking specifically for the greens. And again, this is gonna give you kind of that softer wash on your lids. It's not going to be super bright and pigmented. Now let's start off, we're going to take a look at the Retro Glam palette in comparison with the Pastel palette. And this is gonna be a midi sized palette. This came out relatively recently this year as well. And I have to say, I really like this one. So it's definitely a beautiful, beautiful palette. I am gonna show you all of these shades side by side, but I just wanna take a look at this mint shade here and show you that kind of right here with the um, shade in the Retro Glam palette. And that one's called Marlin. So this is Marlin and this shade here is Sage. And you can see how much more blue, how much more aqua, it is in the pastel palette, and that's gonna be true for the other greens as well, but that's really kind of your closest shade in there. 
And I think it's really beautiful. So as we're looking at these comparisons with the pastel, yes, we're gonna have light shades like we do in the Retro Glam, but the pastel palette is gonna be much more vibrant, more like candy colors and so forth. It reminds me more of like the Easter egg colors and so forth. So very beautiful palette, but again, it is going to be a very different look. This one's gonna be softer yet vibrant shades, whereas the Retro Glam's gonna be a little bit more murkier, a little bit more neutral. You know, you're looking at more like, um, not really olive tones in the green, but you know, it is gonna be a little bit more muted than what you would get in there. And our pinks, you can see that the pinks in the pastel palette are gonna be much brighter pinks, whereas we're looking at more like tea rose and muted versions of like rose shades and peachy roses in the Retro Glam. So moving on, let's take a look at the Glam palette here. And the Glam palette, let's see these side by side. So here's the Retro Glam, here is the Glam. So you can see side by side, the color stories do look very, very different. However, we do have some of those similar neutral shades in here. Now this palette, when this came out, the Glam palette was kind of considered to be cool neutrals. I personally don't really think it's cool neutrals. I think the majority of these shades are actually going to be neutral um, on the warmer side though. So we do have some cooler shades such as the center eyelid shade and so forth. But for the most part, well, actually, I guess there are a few center eyelid shades, but we do have some cooler shades in there, but most of them lean a bit warm. And I feel like that is kind of what carried through with the Glam palette's influence into the Retro Glam. So you can see that we do have some neutral shades in here that are reminiscent. Um, but again, the Glam palette itself, you don't have any greens. That center eyelid shade, let's go ahead and just swatch that near a rose. So here is the first center eyelid shade, which is kind of that pink, and it's gonna be a bit shimmery, but you can see the tone of this is going to be kind of a mix of these two shades here, which are Holly and Belle from Retro Glam. So you do have, you know, a little bit of, you know, a, a, a little bit of continuation there from that palette. But for the most part, again, we're really focusing more on the browns that are included in the Retro Glam. Now, one thing I would like to know about the Glam versus the Retro Glam, although we are focusing on the neutrals, there are no dupes. The shades are not going to be the same. And, you know, basically wherever you do have something fa fairly similar, your finish is going to be different. And I do think that the Retro glam palette neutrals are slightly cooler a little they're not cool but they're more neutral on the spectrum than those in the glam palette which lean a little bit warmer overall than those in the retro glam and last up let's take a look at the retro mini and i really feel like although this was inspired by the retro mini and the glam palette we're really looking mostly at the mini. I mean, look at how similar this color story is in general. The one thing that really has kind of deviated is this mini focuses more on like the olive greens and kind of the peachy pinks and so forth. Whereas this, we, you know, these greens are really much mintier. And I do wish that we had something a bit more olive tone, something more like these shades in the Retro Glam palette. You know, I feel like that was kind of a little bit of a deviation and it looks great, but I would have loved to have seen a, l a little bit more of these shades in there as well. So I do have, you know, kind of a comparison there of the, you know, the mini shades with this. And I tried to put them, you know, the closest I could find to those, but let's go ahead and just swatch a few of those again. So these are the first three shades here. So I just wanna show you this first shade. We're gonna put that right next to the Flutter shade. You can see this is gonna be much peachier. And then this is going to be our next shade, which I think, yes, it's industrial. So this first shade is Galaxia. Industrial, let's put that right here so you can kind of see how that goes. And you can see that this has a lot more gray in there. It's gonna be more olive tone versus this one being more of like a pine evergreen. And then the next shade, which is kind of that olive matte, is called 60s. 
and it doesn't really go you know super well with any of these it's really kind of more of a mix of a brown and a green and it's gonna be a little bit more pigmented so I just I think it's a really great shade I wish it something like that was included in the retro glam but i do think that's something that makes these palettes go really well together so we might as well just swatch the last two so this is kind of that matte peachy shade you can see we don't have anything quite like that and then our last shade here is this kind of pink duochrome that's called pixie so this is actually called vintage taupe it's not a taupe it's really much more of a rusty peach and then we have the pixie shade. So overall, I can see the inspiration and you know, I think it's nice for being in a series, but I do hope that there is another retro palette coming out that just kind of has more like olive tones and perhaps even some other shades that kind of inspire this. So I feel like maybe seeing some more like bronze coppery tones with some olive greens and maybe even some pewters, that might really be a nice, you know, combination of colors to see together that still go along with this retro th theme. Now, moving on, we are taking a look at this Hakuhodo Cherry Blossom brush set. And this one is called the Cherry Blossom of Winter set. And as I mentioned before, it was originally part of a holiday set that they've decided to make a just a limited edition set. You can see you have this really beautiful uh, Sakura flower here. And, you know, it's you've got that inlay there. Um, it's really a, look at this beautiful gradient on the handle. You've got a little bit of gold shimmer throughout, but you're going from a brighter pink to a softer pink and you have the silver ferrules. So I will put the name of the Hakuhodo brushes on the screen so you can see, you know, if you have something like that already in your collection, but we're going to go ahead and start off looking at these. So I'm going to show you some demos of the these brushes as we talk about these. But first up, we are looking at the Hakuhodo J531 brush and this is going to be the powder brush in the set. So it is going to be made out of goat hair. It's an angled shape and this makes it really easy to use for either setting powder, finishing powder, blush, bronzer. You know, it is going to be a little bit larger. So you probably don't want to use it for contour just because it might diffuse out a little bit too much. But it's a very soft brush. It's very nice. I think this is a really great versatile brush and I do have a few comparisons. So let's take a look. All right, so these are my comparisons. So first of all, take a look here at the Hakuhodo brush. Look at how that sweeps very, very soft on the skin. Uh, it doesn't specify what kind of goat hair it is, but it feels like Psycho to me. This here is the Face Pro from Sonya G. So if we look at these side by side, you can see that this is going to kind of poof out a little bit more than the Hakuhodo. It, does seem to have a little bit more hair. It's a little bit more tightly compressed there, but you can see when you are using this because of that, it does give you a little bit more of a firmer presence. So it's going to act a little bit more dense than the Hakuhodo. Now, the next comparison I have is one of my favorites. This is the Chikahodo F04, and you can see very, very similar shape but this is gonna be significantly smaller. This is actually fox hair, it's incredibly soft, but notice the movement of this is going to be fairly similar. This is obviously larger, so it's gonna be a little bit softer, um, as in a softer finish on the skin, not necessarily the fibers being softer because these are actually softer, uh, but it will give you a softer application because there's a little bit more movement with the hairs. Next up, this is another very similar brush. This is going to be a Koyoto brush. This came from last year. This is the year of the Ox, their Lunar New Year brush. And look at these. They are pretty similar. So, you know, this is going to be a very similar brush in performance to the Hakuhodo. The Hakuhodo being undyed goat hair is gonna be just a little bit more versatile because you can you know, use it with liquids and creams and so forth. So this one here is gonna be just a little bit more delicate. You definitely wanna use that exclusively with powders. Next up, we have the blush brush. 
Now let's take a look at the demos for this. You can use this for blush. I even use it for highlight because there is not really a highlight brush in here. Now, if you are going to use it for highlight, you definitely want to use it with something that you don't need to be so targeted with because it is a little bit of a large brush for this. You can also use this for bronzer and this one is narrow enough that if you want to use it for contour, you could totally do that as well. This one is also going to be made out of goat hair. It's just as soft as a powder brush. And according to Hakuhodo, it's an essential blush brush that creates a gorgeous defined look. The bristles are designed to hug the cheekbone and produce natural color. Lay the brush flat and move smoothly on the skin to enjoy building a very natural color layer. So I think this is a very versatile brush. It's a really beautiful brush and this is equivalent to the J110, I believe. Let's look at a few comparisons though. My most similar brush to this is actually the Refer 05. Look at the, how similar these are. You can see the Refer is going to be a little bit, you know, it flares out a little bit more here. It's a little bit thicker there, but shape wise, they're going to be fairly similar size wise. They're also pretty similar. So I feel like this is a very good, you know, comparison and one that a lot of people probably have in their collections. Now, as I mentioned, the Refer does flare out a little bit more. So notice how it moves along my skin compared to the Hakahoto. The Hakahoto is going to kind of stay a little bit more um, bundled, whereas this will flare out a little bit more when you're using it. It'll give you a little bit more of a diffuse application versus the Hakahoto. And again, this Hakahoto, because it is so finely bundled here, this works really well in more of a patty motion, whereas the Refer, you know, sweeping motion works well as well. So they both are pretty similar, I would say. And then next up, my last comparison for this one is actually the FO3 from Chikahoto. You can see that the Chikahoto is going to be a little bit taller. Again, this is going to be fox hair, but again, we do have a similar shape. Now, the fox hair does have a different kind of spring than the goat, but you are going to see a very similar performance between the two brushes. Next, we have a shader style eyeshadow brush. And I did use this one today, so it is dirty right now, but you can see that this is going to be a kind of your medium sized shader. Again, I will have a few comparisons of this. This is gonna be similar to the J004. And this one is also made out of goat hair. So this is considered by Hakahoto, an eyeshadow brush for eyelids with a perfect length of hair to create a natural look. And you know, I think it's a really great brush. This can be used wet or dry, and it's firmly pressed enough that you can use this with shimmery shades without a lot of fallout. And I, you know, I have to say, I think this is a great brush. So I did kind of give you some demos of this, you know, in some of the um, eye demos. So you can see more of the eyeshadow brushes there, but I'll just show you a little bit of those here. Let's take a look at some comparisons. This is the Sonia G Soft Shader. You can see it's going to be much thicker and it is just ever so slightly more rounded, but otherwise it is going to be fairly similar in size. The Soft Shader is ever so slightly taller and again, that width there is going to make it a little fluffier. Now, in comparison, I have the B004G. So, uh, very, you know, this is essentially the same as the the same brush. So you can see that, um, yeah, they're pretty identical. The only difference really here is going to be your handles. And this is a brush I use all the time. I think it's a really great brush. So that would be one that's in the permanent collection that's essentially the same. Now for other comparisons, this here is a Tansado brush. So I purchased a set of four eyeshadow brushes from Tansado. This is the second largest. You can see it's much larger than this. And then this is the smallest. So you can see that this is kind of in between and you know, I can't find my in between size, but it's going to be pretty similar to this one here. And I do have a comparison with the B004G in my Tansado video. So if you want to see that a little bit more closely, but this does bring me in very nicely to our next brush, which is this one here. So this is another eyeshadow brush and you can see it's very close to the smallest Tansado. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more square and notice the Tansado is going to be a little bit fluffier. Um, so 
there's a lot more movement, whereas the Hakahodo is going to be a little bit more stiff. So let's take a look at this one. And you can totally use this to line the eyes. You can use this underneath, or you can use it for, um, you know, detail work with shimmers and so forth, which is kind of how I used it. So this is, you know, according to Hakahodo, used for shading the edges of the eyes. You can use the broad side to apply your eyeshadow formal, uh, firmly and then the thin side for a fine line. So I think it's a really great brush. So it feels very much like the other brush, just a smaller version. Now, just one more comparison here. This is the Smudger 2 from Sonia G. You can see this is gonna be a little bit shorter, a little bit boxier but notice the movement here between these. So going back and forth is gonna be pretty similar, but this is gonna be a little bit stiffer, the Sonia G. But if you're using the thin side, look at how this moves versus the Sonia G. They're gonna be similar, but again, overall, this is gonna be a little bit stiffer, mostly because it's shorter, but it's just something to note. They will perform very, very similarly. And I do think that this one having slightly longer brushes than the Smudger 2 makes it much easier. This size in particular works really well in like the inner corner area and things like that. Whereas the Smudger 2 is just a little bit wide for that in my opinion. Next we have this Hakahodo eyeshadow brush and it looks kind of like a crease brush or a pencil brush, but it's going to be pretty firm. So let's take a look at this in action. So this eyeshadow brush is going to be made out of horsehair as well. And this one is actually intended for drawing bold lines at the corner of the eye or blurring an eyeliner. And I think that's really what this brush excels at. It's soft enough to blend something out and it is stiff enough to create kind of a thicker line but it is definitely not going to be as um you know the hairs do not bend quite as much as some of the comparison brushes i have here which are going to be more suitable for like kind of buffing or blending things out whereas this is just going to be a little bit it's going to stay in place a little bit more firmly so i think it's a really great and versatile brush and one that I didn't know I would like so much, I have to say. So let's take a look at this. So you can see here, you've got kind of this pencil shape. You can see that it's a bit firm here. And when I used this on the eyes, you can see it really does create that line nicely. So this is the Ruffer 26. You can see this is gonna be a little bit larger, but it's the same shape. But look how much this one actually bends, how much flex you have in the bristles. This is definitely going to give you a softer look. This one, the bristles bend just a bit too much to really create a line with. So this is great for smudging, for dabbing in the inner corner and so forth, but creating a line, this one's just a little bit too flexible for that. And then this is the Sonia G Pencil Pro. You can see that the Hakahodo is gonna be more pointed. It's gonna be a little bit longer, but this is a pretty dense brush. There's not quite as much movement as there was with the Ruffer. But again, because this is gonna be more blunt tipped, you're not gonna be able to do that line either. And this is great for smudging. It's gonna be a, a little bit more firm for smudging, but again, because you have that blender tip, you are looking more at really kind of blending things out. And again, this one's just not gonna be as great at you know creating a line. So I think this one is actually pretty unique and um, I like it. I did not think I would and actually, took me a while to start using this one because it's like, I, I just didn't know how I'd wanna use it. Um, and I actually really like it. Now, last up, we have the lip brush. This is synthetic. Let's take a look at this one. Now, I used this a couple of different ways and I actually, you know, I did use this as a lip brush. It works actually really well as a lip brush, as you might expect. It is larger than all lip brushes that I have. All of the other lip brushes I have are much smaller than this. So, you know, I was a little surprised. So it's definitely better for putting on large swatches of color on the lips. The tip you can definitely use for precision, but because it is kind of a longer bristled brush, there's gonna be a, a lot more movement of those bristles. So it's harder to get a really thin, precise line with this. So I think this is really better for working with large areas of color on the lips. But another use that I have for this is actually, um, I think this works really well with liquid eyeliner, or if you wanna use like a dampened brush for eyeliner, this 
actually is great for doing like a wing or something like that. So I think this is actually a very versatile brush and I will probably use it more for eyeliner than I do for lips just because honestly I don't use lip brushes too much, but I do have one comparison. So this here's my comparison. This is the Chikahoto AF, what number, eight. Hard to read that on there, but you can see it's similar in size for length and shape, but it's about half of the width here. So that's my comparison. I have to say, I do have one more brush that I forgot to mention. This is the last brush. This is the eyebrow brush and you know, it's nice, it's fluffy. Let's take a look. So this eyebrow brush is made out of horse hair and this is, you know, meant, it works really well with like powder if you're buffing out like a harsher line in your eyebrow. I actually prefer using it kind of to create like a smudged eyeliner look with eyeshadow. It is a little bit wider than other brushes like that. So you definitely want to go for more of a smudged look. It's not going to give you, you know, as much precision of a thin line but it works really well for that. That's probably what I'm going to use it as. And I think it's a nice brush, but it's probably not one that I will use a ton. So I do have one comparison with this one as well. All right, so my comparison is the Byredo. This is the number 11. I use this one all the time for liner. You can see that this has a steeper slant. It's larger overall. This is synthetic versus the horsehair here. And you can see how much more movement the horsehair has, how much more flexible it is. And again, it's really gonna give you kind of a softer diffused eyeliner look if you wanna use it there, or it's great for, you know, all over powder in the brows, but because it is gonna be a little bit thicker, it's just not going to give you, um, you know, precision lines. So overall, that is the brush set. And now it does come with a case. So I just wanna show you the case here. It's kind of this, it looks like, you know, kind of like a Sherpa, Sherpa material, but this feels like polyester. You can see it's got a little bit of that polyester luster. It's still, you know, it's soft, it's nice, and you do have, you know, this little flap here to keep any dirty brushes from getting on any clean ones. And this feels more like, um, I mean, like it's, it's a vinyl, but it has a little bit more of a vegan leather feel to it than your traditional vinyl. So not quite, it still feels like vinyl, but a little more so than the average vinyl. So this is the brush case it comes with. Overall, I have to say it's a really nice set. I do like it. And I did pick up another holiday set from um, Chikahoto, the Chocolat set, which I have a short on right now, but I will have a video kind of comparing these different holiday sets and which one I think is best soon. I'm gonna start with the chocolate set <laughs> tomorrow. So we'll film that first and then move on to a comparison. So if you have any requests or particular questions pertaining to any of the brushes from either the Winter Blossom set or the Winter Light set or this Cherry Blossom set or the Chocolat set, please let me know and I will do my best to include them. So I hope this video was helpful. I'd love to know your thoughts on the Retro Glam palette as well as the brushes. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you very soon. Have a wonderful day.